I am not a naughty panda. At least I don't think so. But for whatever reason, Steam is constantly recommending naughty games to me, like a multi-level marketing company trying to offload their garbage. It's beginning to turn into a weekly test of self-control at this point, flicking through my discovery section looking for something productive among the sea of anime boobies and CG strippers. But this week, ladies and gentlemen, I must confess, is no different as I decided to pick up Love Esquire, a naughty visual novel with Jesse Cox in it. What? Don't blame me, it was either that or an early access game. Please don't judge me. Love Esquire is a dating sim visual novel developed by Yang Yang Mobile, a team mostly known for making horror games of all things. And among their earlier titles is a game called The Letter, which I actually played a few years back. And thinking back to those times, I rather enjoyed The Letter. It was a solid horror game with sort of a detective story that was told from different angles. And so I was rather confused to see these developers try to hand out a completely different genre. But hey, who am I to judge somebody for trying something outside their comfort zone? The plot of Love Esquire is as follows. You are a young squire, conscripted by the army to defend a neighbouring nation from an invading horde of giants. The decisive battle is expected to take place roughly 4 months from now, and so in the interest of national security, it is absolutely imperative to the war effort that you, a nameless squire, get your willy wet. You would imagine that there might be several things more important for the people in charge to worry about ahead of getting you laid, but hey, what do I know? Maybe you're some sort of anime Sarah Connor or something. So let's take a look at this season's Bachelorette contestants. You got a hot-headed ginger, an introverted nurse, a tsundere queen, an exotic foreigner, and lastly your non-blood related foster sister. Not quite sure what the fuck that last one was all about, but hey, it's probably to satisfy a very messed up diversity quota or something. Regardless, like a proper romantic, your goal is to win the heart of one of these lucky gals by agreeing with everything they have to say, stalking them across town, and pampering them with gifts. You know. Nothing special. Just the normal kind of things a gentleman has to do to get a restraining order. I mean to get a girl to like him. Outside of that, most of your time with the game is spent juggling between leveling up your skills and going out adventuring. During adventures, you play the supporting role in what is effectively a watered down turn-based RPG game. And while some of the attack animations are really funny, it does end up overstaying its welcome. This is partly due to the low variety of enemies, but it is mostly because of how disconnected it is from the main story. In fact, the only reason to go adventuring in the first place is to gather money which you use to spend on gifts and training lessons so that you can max out your stats which is about as entertaining as filling out a spreadsheet yeah okay if you make it to the end you win a special ocarina that makes your lady go extra horny but truth be told it really is just another gift which are quite abundant as they practically grow on trees there was just no serious attempt to marry any of the adventuring sections with the main plot, which is such a shame as I rather enjoyed most of the writing throughout the game. The dialogue is quite colourful and genuinely gets me invested in the characters. However, while the majority of the writing is relatively light-hearted, the deeper into the story we get, the more the writers try and tack on some sort of tragic backstory in what could only be described as an attempt to score pity sex. And that's where the tone issues start to appear. See, you can't have a character undergoing severe depression over the loss of her patient one day and then have have her participating in a sexy swimsuit competition on another without feeling insincere. Now don't get me wrong fellas, I understand the need to create hurdles for a character to overcome during these type of stories, but come on guys, there's gotta be more ways to build relationships other than through sympathy. I mean just look at the hentai genre if you're short on ideas here, and it would be a good idea to have more diverse relationships because it means more replay value for the weirdos, I mean rock stars who want to score with all 5 girls. In fact there really isn't a whole lot of value in replaying the game at all. While games like the letter offer for quite a lot of new information with each new playthrough, the best love Esquire can bring to the table is a couple of new naughty scenes. Yeah okay, I guess there were a couple of unique side stories including one involving a mystery assassin trying to infiltrate our town. But come on guys, there may be like 10 characters total in the entire story. 5 of them I get to sleep with, and among the others are my foster father, my knight mentor, and a character played by Jesse Cox. So it's not exactly rocket science to figure out who the mystery villain is here. Did I at least enjoy the naughty bits you might ask? Yeah, fine, I suppose I did. But still, I feel like there was an opportunity missed here. I mean, Christ, you managed to get Jesse Cox, one of the funniest people on YouTube to appear in your game. Why is he just a boring bartender? He should have been the main villain. Personally, I would have written a story where Jesse Cox storms into your town, kidnaps your favorite waifu, and locks her in his underground secret sex dungeon, giving you only 4 months to graduate from night college and rescue her before she gets brainwashed into becoming his personal cosplayer. My adventures may have just begun, but for now I'll have some fun. I'll keep on going just for now. Oh, what do I do when I'm feeling stumped? What do I do when I'm feeling bored? Why I take my sword and have some fun. Just a few more strokes and I'll be done.